we are going to discuss about heat capacity. Very, very important topic in thermodynamics. In thermodynamics chapter, there are some core concepts which you should be always thorough with. They are, one is enthalpy related calculations. Then isothermal work done, very, very important. Third is heat capacity. And fourth is the upcoming Hess's law and Gibbs energy. These are the four main core concepts in thermodynamics which you should always be thorough with. Okay, so that's the idea. What is the heat capacity? To understand this, we are going to uh, use some mathematical relations to make this concept clear. We know that Q is meant by heat. Q is heat, we know that. So when Q, what is this Q? When Q increases, what does that mean? Heat is increasing, then temperature will obviously increase. That is, heat is directly proportional to change in temperature. So when temperature and increasing, heat obviously increases or vice versa. This we know. When temperature and increasing to 100 degrees Celsius, heat content increases. So that is direct proportionality. To remove this proportionality, we are introducing a constant. That constant is known as your heat capacity and it is denoted by C. C is a heat capacity. That is the heat is directly proportional to temperature. So to remove, we are using a constant. Remove proportionality using a constant C delta T. So the C is equal to Q divided by delta T. What does that mean? What is the definition of Q divided by delta T? This heat capacity C is the ratio of heat to temperature change. So that means how much amount of temperature is needed. Okay, that is denoted by delta T. So I can define C as the amount of heat supplied to raise the temperature by 1 degree. That is heat capacity is defined as the quantity of heat quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of a body by 1 degree. It can be 1 degree Celsius, 1 degree Fahrenheit, 1 degree Kelvin, sorry, 1 Kelvin, anything. 1 degree, okay? Generally, we use Kelvin or degree Celsius. Fahrenheit, we are not directly using. Okay? So, we know that the SI unit of the heat capacity is what? Heat capacity, normal heat capacity SI unit will be, this is Joule. Joule is heat divided by temperature Kelvin. So, it is Joule per Kelvin. Standard SI, that is SI unit we are telling Joule per Kelvin. This is the SI unit of heat capacity. Heat capacity is defined as the quantity of heat that you should supply so as to raise the temperature of a substance by 1 degree. For example, water at 27 degrees Celsius, room temperature, I need to make it into 28 degrees Celsius. How much amount of heat needed? This heat is known as your heat capacity. Understood? So this is all about heat capacity. But there are types of heat capacities like molar heat capacity, specific heat capacity. Two types. That is important. It's very easy if, uh, to understand the formulas. So listen carefully. Heat capacity we have discussed. Your heat capacity C. I will write heat capacity C. This is your heat capacity. Heat capacity was Q divided by delta T. This was the first formula which we discussed. I will mark it as equation number 1. Now I am going to introduce one another term that is known as specific heat capacity. What is meant by specific heat capacity? Specific heat capacity. I have introduced one more term in the original term. That is heat capacity plus one more term specific. Specific means specifically to mass. So that is heat capacity or specific heat capacity C specific I will write C S C subscript S C small s in the side okay subscript that indicating specific heat capacity C S is actually heat per unit temperature you have done small normal formula Q divided by delta T but we are going to introduce one M also here M indicating mass of that M indicating one kilogram mass one kilogram 
So how will the definition vary? The quantity of heat, quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of what? 1 kilogram of a substance. Temperature of 1 kg. This is very important. 1 kg of substance by 1 degree. It may be 1 degree Celsius or 1 Kelvin. So, the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of a substance was heat capacity. But 1 kilogram of substance is specific heat capacity. This is the only difference. You study this formula C equal to Q by delta T. Specific heat means just put M down. Then what about molar heat capacity? Molar heat capacity is the very simple definition is instead of this M, you put mole, number of mole. Molar heat capacity. In the same we can write Cm indicating molar heat capacity. So that instead of that I will be writing Cm equal to Q divided by delta T is normal formula. To that molar number of mole N. N is the number of mole of a substance. So Q divided by N delta T. So that's indicating where n is the number of mole. How many mole? n equal to 1 mole. Standard and 1 mole. We will indicate. Or number of mole also we can write. Okay. So quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of what? Of 1 mole of a substance by 1 degree is known as molar heat capacity. So for direct formula is Q divided by delta T. Specific heat means 1 kilogram. 1 mass will come here M. Q divided by M delta T. And molar heat capacity will be Q divided by N delta T. This is the three types of, these are the three types of heat capacities. And this I hope it is very easy. And using this numericals will be asked. That we will discuss later. But understand the theory. This is the basic idea regarding heat capacity. If you liked, please share and subscribe. And don't forget to like also.